enjoy slapping people? Think going for melee kills in a game where everyone has a gun is a good idea? Do you love playing medieval mode? Did you somehow run out of ammo and not die in the process as Pyro? Well then, I have the guide for you! I'm Minion, and this is my TF2 Killstreak series, where we look at the best and worst TF2 has to offer and show you how to get a killstreak with it, because everything's a bad idea until it works. Today we will be covering all of Pyro's melee weapons, so without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so originally this video was going to be just about the hot hand. However, after playing with it for a bit, it became obvious I was not going to be able to crank out an entire video around just that one weapon. So instead, I will go over all of Pyro's melee weapons. We will start with the hot hand, since that's what Yin's voted for, after all. At the cost of a 20% damage reduction, you gain a speed boost for every hit you successfully land on an enemy. And much like the beloved fish on Scout, every single hit you land will show up in the kill feed, regardless if it actually gets a kill. However, unlike most melees, the Hot Hand's animation divides damage per click into two slaps, one forward and then a backhand slap, meaning your damage per slap is actually lower than the 20% would entail. This means it takes five slaps to kill a light class at full health. And the speed boost you get per hit with this thing is not going to get much mileage, since if you're in melee distance of your enemy, neither of you is going to be running away. Its only truly useful feature is the fact that it's the only melee weapon the Pyro has that can taunt kill, something that literally every secondary the Pyro has can already do. No, seriously, I spent a solid hour trying to get a kill streak with this weapon before I decided that it wasn't worth the effort and I was going to make this video entirely about all of Pyro's melees rather than just the hot hand. That alone should tell you everything you need to know about this weapon and how bad it is. It's as if Valve heard of all the complaints about how the Sharpened Volcano Fragment was the Pyro's worst melee weapon and decided the solution to fix that was to create an even worse melee weapon for the Pyro to use. Speaking of the Sharpened Volcano Fragment, let's cover that next. The Sharpened Volcano Fragment is an interesting weapon in the sense that if you just read the stats, with no context for who they're equipped to or what game you're playing, it might actually seem like a half-decent weapon. At the expenditure of 20% less damage on hit, your melee attacks now set opponents on fire. This would be a perfectly okay melee weapon on any class except the Pyro. You know, the one that has a flamethrower. And that's the issue most pyro melee weapons come in contact with. You see, the pyro's primary weapon, for those of you new to TF2, is a flamethrower. I.e., an easy way to melt enemies into oblivion at point-blank range. Meaning, your melee weapons in terms of damage output will always be outcompeted by your primary weapon. And unlike some other classes like Demo Man and Soldier, which can risk self-harm when doing so, or Snipers, which require either an aimbot or a colossal amount of skill to pull off successfully, the effort required for the Pyro to kill someone at point-blank range is borderline non-existent. And as a former Pyro main, I can personally attest that all of the skills you need to use Pyro successfully can pretty much boil down to learning to air blast and understanding how to position and flank. I've heard some people argue that the Sharpened Volcano Fragment's good, because what if you're out of ammo and still want to set people on fire? WHAT?! WHAT THE FUCK?! If that's the situation, you're dead. Because, let's be honest here, enemies drop ammo on death, meaning if you're killing people, you should not be running out of ammo in any capacity. The only reason you should be running out of ammo with your flamethrower is if you're air blasting like crazy. But let's be honest with ourselves here, if that's the situation you're in, you're air blasting away like crazy at a soldier or a demo man. You're not going to be in melee range if that's the case, you're trying to reflect rockets and other projectiles so that you can get in range. As a result of all this, the Sharpened Volcano Fragment is just a strict downgrade from stock unless you're playing in medieval mode. But even then, the Sharpened Volcano Fragment isn't very good since instead of dropping ammo on death, players will start dropping health kits instead. Which means not only can the player that killed you extinguish themselves with the health kit you drop by being killed, the Sharpened Volcano Fragment becomes drastically outclassed by the Backscratcher, which is just the default weapon for Pyros in Medieval Mode. Butt Scratcher! 
Butt Scratcher! Get your Butt Scratcher here! Butt Scratcher! 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 The Back Scratcher holds a special place in my heart since it was actually the first item drop I ever got in TF2 after making my own account. And for the longest time, it was actually my go to melee for playing Pyro. And once I show you the stats, it won't be very hard for anyone to see why. The first major benefit this weapon has is that you get 25% bonus in damage with your melee swings. The other benefit this weapon provides is that you heal 50% more from medkits, regardless if you have this weapon pulled out at the time. The only downside this weapon has is that you get 75% less healing from healers, meaning the payload card on payload maps, the medics, mediguns, as well as dispensers placed by engineers, which are also affected by this. And since the only thing affected by this negative stat that you can actually use in medieval mode is the Amputator's Taunt Heal, and for those of you asking about the Crusader's Crossbow, it's not affected by this weapon whatsoever. I'm not sure why, it's just not. What I am sure of is that this weapon is situationally just a straight upgrade to all the other melee weapons, since if there's no one on your team playing Engineer or Medic, and you don't have a payload card to push whatsoever, there's no downside to having this weapon equipped whatsoever. Combine all this with the fact that if you get a random crit, you'll do 244 damage, which is more than enough to kill anything less than a heavy. Yeah, you can see why this is the meta weapon for pyros on medieval mode. However, you will rarely see this weapon being used outside of medieval mode these days due to the sheer utility the power jack has now. Whilst the Back Scratcher is perfect for those of you wanting to sustain your killstreak through the power of health kits, the Power Jack is an amazing tool for pyros in general. With a 15% movement speed buff whilst deployed and 25 health on kill, this weapon is perfect for when you need to get in or out of a situation rather quickly. The only downside this weapon provides is the fact that you take 20% more damage whilst deployed. This negative effect, however, is rarely noticed by pyros who use this weapon since they only use this item in one of three scenarios. The most common scenario you'll see this weapon being used is by pyros who want to get to the front lines faster. After all, the 15% speed buff is easy to see, whilst the damage vulnerability requires someone to be shooting at you, which won't happen until you get to the front lines. The second situation you will see this weapon being used is as a discount escape plan, as a way for pyros who are close to death to escape situations by giving them a slight speed buff. Given how you can use this weapon in the same way you use the Gru on Heavy or the escape plan on Soldier interchangeably, and you can quickly see why this is the default weapon most pyro mains have equipped in their melee slot. The minus with the fact that you actually heal on kill with this weapon means you can easily switch to it to finish off foes before they have a chance to react, allowing you to top off your health as you go on your way. While I will say this weapon is inferior to the back scratcher in terms of healing potential, outside of medieval mode I would say the power drag is just superior in every meaningful way. After all, the damage vulnerability this weapon gives you is only active when deployed, so as long as you're not playing medieval mode where you have to have your melee out 24-7, you can turn it off at will. All you'll have to do is simply switch to any weapon that isn't your melee whenever you don't want to deal with the damage vulnerability. Due to the extreme versatility and usefulness of its upsides and negligible downside, the Power Jack is a must-have for any pyro trying to play seriously in any meaningful capacity. However, there is one serious playstyle where this weapon isn't the best option. Whether you love this subclass or hate it, it's time we cover the Pyro next. The Homewrecker is the perfect melee for pyros who wish to help their team. This is because it can remove sappers from engineer buildings in one clean swing, making it more effective at removing sappers than the engineer's wrench. It also deals 100% more damage to buildings, but this will almost never come up except for when you occasionally end up destroying a teleporter or dispenser if you end up in the back lines. What might come up, however, is its one downside, the fact that you deal 25% less damage to players. As you might have been able to tell from looking at the stat lineups of this weapon, it's quite obvious that this weapon, while quite good, is completely useless for those of you trying to go for a killstreak. Don't get me wrong, this is a great weapon to have, especially if you're playing co-op with an engineer, but when you're trying to get a killstreak, this thing is just useless. Its whole stick is that it's great for dealing with engineers and helping your own out, not killing people. 
However, if you want to remove sappers but still want to be able to go for kills under the right circumstances, there is an alternative that's just as good in my opinion. Let's go! The Neon Annihilator is similar to the Homewrecker in that it can remove sappers, albeit in two hits rather than the Homewrecker's one, making it equal to the Engineer's wrench. However, outside of the sapper removal department, the Neon Annihilator is superior to the Homewrecker in all aspects, since the downside of doing less damage to players is 20 instead of 25%. However, that's not the reason most players use the Neon Annihilator. That reason goes to the fact that it gets guaranteed crits against players who are constituted as wet. The most common sources of causing a player to become wet are having them be coated in a sniper's Dorati, the mad milk of the scout, or simply falling into a body of water, usually the giant pool in the sewers beneath Tufort. As a result of this ability, the most common use you'll see for the Neon Annihilator is for the subclass known as the Shark Pyro, where a pyro will simply wait in a body of water for players to fall in and then go to town on them with the Neon Annihilator. Contrary to the name, you'll be acting more like a spider sitting in a web waiting for your prey to come in rather than a shark, which tends to be a bit more active chasing the smell of blood. Please bear in mind that your critical hits with this weapon deal 156 damage, meaning demo men, soldiers, and heavies at full health will be able to survive your first strike, and will usually have a chance to react to you before you can finish them off. I recommend using one of the shotguns if you intend to go about this playstyle as a result, since if the player can survive the first hit and make some space, you can usually finish them off rather quickly with a shotgun regardless. Also, please bear in mind that the gas passer is not affected by this whatsoever, so even if you drowse your foes in gasoline with this weapon, you will not be able to combo it with a Neon Annihilator. And don't forget to use this weapon if you have a teammate that's using Gerardi or Mad Milk to catch spies whilst they're cloaked, since once you find them with this effect on them, you can one-shot them with this weapon. And while I don't consider Pyro or Shark Pyro to be competitive in any way, they are certainly one of the more fun playstyles in the game. They are certainly more fun than playing with the stock melee on Pyro. Speaking of which... I've already explained the main issue with Pyro and his melee weapons, and playing stock just makes it so much worse. Why would you try to beat a Demo Knight at his own game when you can just air blast him instead? And in medieval mode, you have better options like the Backscratcher and Sharpen Volcano Fragment, so it's just outclassed in every situation. Meaning there's only two situations you will realistically be seeing stock melee on Pyro in most cases. The first is for new players who just haven't unlocked anything for the Pyro's melee slot yet, which is understandable, we all have to start somewhere. The second reason is for those of you trying to exploit the bug on the third degree. You see, the third degree has a bug where it can actually damage people through medic beams. This means that you can actually hurt a medic by simply smacking their pocket in the face with third degree, and vice versa. Valve has since tried to hide this bug in the game by disguising it as a feature by adding text to the third degree stating that it's actually an intended factor of the game, but we all know the truth. We all know Valve would never add a completely useless stat to a weapon that has no practical use in the game whatsoever. They're smarter than that. Accept your plans. <laughs> Still, if you want to get some mileage out of this weapon before it ends up being nerfed like the Solemn Vow, since it's technically the only direct upgrade in the game, the best mileage I have figured out for this is to simply use it in a Puff and Sting combo, since then if the medic is still healing someone as you kill them off with the Puff and Sting, you'll be able to remove the overheal from whoever they were pocketing before. However, if you intend to be trying to go for a Puff and Sting kill streak, yeah, we all know what weapon you're really going to be using. So, without any further ado, let's give a round of applause to our last melee weapon to cover. You know it. You love it. Nerfed but not forgotten, the Extinguisher. Long ago, before the Jungle Inferno update, the Extinguisher was actually the meta melee weapon of choice for most pyros, hence why it's one of the few weapons the pyro has in Australian quality. The reason for this is actually quite simple. Once upon a time, it granted guaranteed critical hits on burning players, which solved the issue all melee weapons have to deal with that, as I previously stated, is known as, why should I go for a melee kill when I have a flamethrower? And for a time, there was a clear answer. 
guaranteed critical hits. Indeed, this weapon was so powerful it resulted in what is now known as the Puff and Sting combo, where a player will air blast a burning player into the air and then finish them off with your extinguisher. Considering how before Jungle Inferno predicting the trajectory of air blasted targets was much easier, and the fact that the extinguisher can be acquired through the Pyro Milestone 3 achievement, you can see why this became a very popular metagame among all players. In fact, this was such a prevalent playstyle that most Pyro mains would view any other playstyle as effectively shooting yourself in the foot in comparison. However, nowadays, instead of getting a full-blown crit, you get a mini crit that extinguishes the player and does damage based on how much afterburn that would have happened to them otherwise, as well as a speed boost on kill. The negatives attached to this weapon as well are not exactly helping the situation either, being a 33% damage penalty, no random crits, and a slower holster time. But with the knockback of the Air Blast being reworked in Jungle Inferno, switch speed being changed on Pyro, and just the huge overhaul of tweaks and balance changes at face in Jungle Inferno in general, this playstyle just isn't what it used to be. And it was just like salt in a wound for me, because I had just learned how to pull off that combo successfully before Jungle Inferno hit, and then the thing I worked so hard to master was nerfed into the ground. Don't get me wrong, the Extinguisher in the Puff and Sting combo as a whole is still viable, though it does require you to use the Degreaser in order to get maximum efficiency out of. So while you can still play this old playstyle, it is a far cry from its golden days. Still, if you're a returning player from years of old, or just want to try out a new playstyle on your favorite class of Pyro, you should still be able to have some success with this combo regardless of the heavy nerfs on Jungle Inferno, since all Jungle Inferno really did to the Puff and Sting combo is increase the skill required to actually pull it off successfully, as well as making other playstyles viable in comparison. To clarify, I don't think Valve was in the wrong for nerfing this playstyle into the ground whatsoever. However, I had just mastered it before Jungle Inferno hit, and as a result, replaying this old playstyle again years after the fact just reopened the old wound. All in all, I give the pyro melees and everything out of 10. Some are great, some are terrible, and I'll leave a tier list on the screen here now to show you what I think about them in terms of getting a killstreak. Please bear in mind that this is just about how efficient they are at getting you a killstreak, not how good they are at getting a killstreak directly, or how good they are in general. For instance, the Home Wrecker is a great weapon, but it's also terrible at getting you kills, so it's at the bottom of the tier list. I recommend to pause the video now if you wish to carefully look over the list I made for this video. That's all for now, like the video if you did, comment what weapons you want to see me cover in the future, and subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one. I've been Anian, and this has been my TF2 killstreak guide to the Pyro's melee weapons. And stay tuned, the sniper backpacks are coming up next.